week, Dion Craig in the First Selectman's Office. So glad that you're joining us. Uh, we wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the 2019-2020 budget. We, uh, we're looking at a budget of total $78,546,116. The breakdown of that is going to be with the Board of Ed at $46,465,743. Uh, the school maintenance, 480,000. Debt services, $5,219,133. And the town budget, $26,381,510. So we brought some people here together to talk about this budget, to hopefully inform you and to, um, and to give you an opportunity to kind of get your head around um, the discussion that's happened and how we've gotten to these numbers. We have Bob Kozlowski, who is our comptroller here at the end, Bob Manfreda, Board of Finance Chairman, Matthew Knickerbocker, First Selectman, and Terry Yonsky, she's the Director of Fiscal Operations for the Board of Ed. Um, myself, being a taxpayer, like many people, most of the people here on this panel, really want to understand this budget before we go to the public hearing and complete the rest of this process. So we're going to start some dialogue here and hopefully be able to answer some questions for you. Thanks so much for joining us. So thank you everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to start with Bob Kozlowski, Comptroller, Fiscal uh, Officer of the Town, uh, who's going to give you just a brief rundown of how the budget process works and how the numbers are developed. Bob? Okay. Um, we start the process on, on the town side in the time frame of around November and we work through with the department heads uh, Matt myself and my assistant will talk to all the department heads about their uh, proposed budgets from there we take it to the Board of um, uh, Selectmen and the Board of Finance with the uh, prior to deliberations where the department head will actually discuss their budgets um, subsequent to that then uh, the Board of Selectmen will do their deliberations and present to the Board of Finance uh, and then at that point, the Board of Finance will um, do their deliberations. The process takes about three months. Um, and I just wanted to point out the, the net result of this is from the time that the budget was originally proposed, uh, there was $730,681,000 in cuts, of which uh, the Board of Selectmen had cut $632,000 and the Board of Finance $98,500. Uh, the net result of these as um, Dion had, had mentioned for the different departments, results in a tax increase of 2.49%. Uh, so right now, the estimated mill rate is uh, at 33.69. So that's a 0.82 increase from last year. And that equates to about $178 increase in taxes for the average homeowner that has a home assessed at uh, $217,000 in the town. On the town side, just to mention some of the increases, um, our budget went up about 400, uh, it went from uh, 907 to 1 million three. And the biggest increases there are uh, employee benefits, about 300,000, pension costs, 110, uh, and capital non-recurring of uh, about 150,000. Um, Bob, I, I believe, is gonna speak to the capital non-recurring. But before we get into that, um, I just wanted to mention too that the 2.49% increase in taxes is really the result of 1.3 million in additional debt service. In the prior years, we had um, debt service roughly around $4 million per year. And this year, with the addition of additional debt for the uh, police station and also for the initial part of the renovations of the schools, that debt service has gone up 1.3. So if you were to take that away, that 2.49% increase would drop down to about a half a percent, and that would equate to about $38 a year in taxes for the average homeowner. Okay, Terry, would you like to cover a little bit about the Board of Ed and the interplay? Certainly. Our process is, is similar. Uh, we meet with each school um, back, at, well, the schools meet, and they start to put together their, their budget requests, and, and also the departments, the, um, like special education and curriculum, those types of departments, back in October. And then um, in November, December, they, uh, they meet with um, 
the, the superintendent, assistant superintendent, and myself, and they present uh, what their initiatives are. We always talk about how our budget has to align to the strategic plan because you want to spend your money in accordance with what your goals are. And, um, and then we compile all of the, the budget and it goes, the superintendent makes some changes and presents to the Board of Ed. And after that, the Board of Education has four budget workshops, uh, four evenings where they really go through most every line uh, in the budget. And, uh, at a, and then when they finish that process, they, it becomes a Board of Education budget. That's been presented now to the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and they also did reduce it $200,000 so far, and which brings us to an increase in spending of just under 3% uh, on the Board of Education spending side. Um, the increase really is um, salaries, benefits, and a little bit of increase in the busing contract. Those are the only significant parts of the change. Um, the salaries are actually uh, put into the budget based on exactly what people will make next year. It's not just a flat percentage that we add on top of current year salary. We go through what each person will is scheduled to earn uh, next year. So the budget, uh, and 85% being salaries and benefits, the budget has a lot of real accuracy in it uh, when we put it together. And I want to compliment you because uh, the Board of Ed budgets have always been very highly targeted, uh, no fluff, uh, just down to business, and have done a good job with that. Well, thank you. And I'd like to turn this over to Bob Manfreda, Chair of the Board of Finance, to talk a little bit about the capital and capital non-recurring lines. Sure. Thanks, Matt. You know, we on the Board of Finance think, think it's important for the folks to understand that this budget is based on an assumption that the town approved important infrastructure investments in the police station and in the school renovation, and thought that we should continue the typical services that the town has enjoyed. We would ask people to come to the public hearing to let us know how they feel about that assumption. As Bob had pointed out, there's not much in the way of additional spending in this budget, but for the mandatory uh, debt service due to, again, the police station and the schools, to the Board of Ed, to the salaries, and also to the park and rec. Now the park and rec expenditures are offset by revenue, so net net they kind of zero out. That leaves the fifth big item, which is the capital not recurring. Again, consistent with what we tried to do last year, which is the beginning of breaking Bethel's addiction to the use of debt, we thought we would stop using the town's credit card, that is the use of short-term debt, to pay for certain expense items. And we then instead brought those into the budget to pay to fund them currently as opposed to funding them through short-term debt and incurring additional interest expense. The Board of Selectmen asked that the Board of Finance consider certain capital plan items and certain capital non-recurring items. In the end, what the Board of Finance did was suggest that the capital <coughs> would cover the $1 million of the high school boilers. We would borrow money to pay, borrow money or use the fund balance to pay for that improvement uh, based on its its size. Within the capital now recurring, we hope to pay for a number of additional improvements, things like plow trucks, things like the high school track resurfacing. Again, we think it is more prudent, it is fiscally prudent, given where we are today in the economy, to pay for these things with cash as opposed to borrowing short-term debt. So that's why you see the fifth driver of the budget, again the first four being debt service, board of ed, salaries, and park and rec. The fifth driver being capital now recurring related to how the town pays for capital items and sufficiently funds itself to not borrow debt to pay for those items. So that's really how capital are recurring and capital are interrelated and are impacted into the budget. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit with just a little bit of a summary. Um, one of the things you're going to hear as we go through this budget season is the change in year over year in spending. And you're gonna hear the number, it is a little bit over 5% in the actual change in expenses in the budget that's proposed. But again, the tax change is only 2.9%, 2, 2 which is slightly about, or maybe a, a hair over the rate of inflation. And I know many people are confused by that number. How can it be that the spending goes up more, but the, that the taxes are, are mitigated? Uh, to Bob Manfreda's point, um, the expense line 
captures things that we need to spend money on. And just to let you know what's, what's driving that, as Terry already mentioned, there's salaries, there's bus contract and so on. On the, on the town side, uh, the town still has this, essentially the same number of people doing important functions that it has for the last 10 years. So in our building department, planning and zoning department, fire marshal's office, public works and health department, same staff, but the town is growing. In fact, we're very fortunate that we are one of the few towns in Connecticut that is growing. Our population change has been about five and a half percent since the last census. There's also, as I'm sure you've noticed, a lot of development in town, and that puts a lot of pressure to get those uh, building permits out, health permits, and they're required by law to issue those things within a certain period of time. With uh, building permits and zoning permits, it's 30 days. With health permits, it's only 15 days. So the budget you see does have a little bit of extra part-time help, a few extra hours, because they're required to do that. However, and this is the most important part, those also generate fees. The people who apply for those things pay for them. So they're actually, those departments are essentially self-supporting. Mm -hmm. So when the expenses go up like this, the new fees come in and actually push the tax rate down. That's why there's a big difference between that 5% and the actual change that you will see in your tax bill. Same thing with the Park and Recreation Department. There are new programs because we have a variety of new children entering the system, and especially the Park and Rec Department has taken over the before school and after school programs. But again, those are paid by parents, so that new revenue completely offsets that change. And it's important that you know the facts about that. So we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching. And I invite everyone to please join us at Bethel Middle School in the auditorium at 7 p.m., I believe, on March 19th. That's uh, one week from today when we're uh, recording this video for you. And we hope to see everyone there. Everybody, Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, all need to hear your feedback and your ideas. So please join us. And thanks again for watching.